Uber is everywhere, and nowhere is it even more everywhere than in New York City. Right now, there are around 13,000 permits for yellow cabs to drive the streets. Uber and Lyft and the other ride-sharing apps, they have about 80,000 cars in the streets. Uber has disrupted pretty much everything about the taxi industry in New York. Uh, drivers say that their wages have gone down. Uber says that it's providing service to outside of Manhattan, where traditionally taxis wouldn't really go. And Uber has also managed to topple a formidable, almost centuries-old institution, the New York City Taxi Medallion. The medallion system is this weird market created by government regulation of the taxi industry. So in New York in 1937, the city put a cap on the amount of yellow cabs that could be on the street. There were too many of them. To drive a cab, you needed one of these, a taxi medallion. It functioned as two things. One is a consistent, reliable way to earn a living and an investment vehicle, if you will, that people would use for their retirement. They borrow the money up front, put down 20%, much like buying a house. They'd refinance as they went along, and then when they sold it, would have this big pot of money then to retire on. About half of the medallions are owned by big time operators. Think hedge funds, banks, or investors like Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer, who at one point owned millions of dollars worth of them. Historically, those big time medallion owners have charged drivers exorbitant fees to lease them out, but it's not all big time investors. About 25% of them are owned by owner operators. They saw the medallion as the safe investment that they could eventually lease out when they wanted to retire. And for a long time, it was a really, really solid investment. They went from around $250,000 in 2003 to more than a million dollars in 2013. But then came Uber. Since Uber came to New York, the value of the medallion has dropped an incredible 90% in five years. 90%! Right now you can pick one up for about $150,000, although good luck trying to get financing to buy one. Those drivers though don't just blame Uber, they blame New York State and New York City for allowing the taxi industry to crumble. Yellow cabs are heavily regulated and Uber managed to swoop in and avoid a lot of the regulations imposed on those taxis. Most significantly, unlike yellow cabs, there's no cap on how many Ubers can be on the streets. So how did this happen? How did Uber manage to avoid most of the regulations that taxis have? For taxi drivers and medallion owners, the answer is simple, money. Last year, Uber was the biggest single company to lobby in all of New York State. It wasn't even close. The medallion system came from government overregulation, and it had its benefits. A lot of drivers and medallion owners made a profit, but it had its problems too. Drivers felt squeezed by medallion owners, and it was really hard to get a cab if you weren't in Manhattan. Uber though, Uber has been underregulated, and that's led to the clock streets of Manhattan and wages dropping. This is the billion dollar question. Is there a middle ground between the under-regulation of Uber and the over-regulation of the yellow cab industry? For the tens of thousands of people who work in the cab industry in New York, that answer can't come soon enough. 